Hi, I wanted to start this channel with a bang and I hope I've done that. Welcome to Product Development, though perhaps I should rename the channel Tested to Destruction. My aim with this video is to start to show you the differences between different types of plates, mugs and bowls, or more specifically the ceramic materials that they're made from, and how this affects the performance of the items that you buy and the end customer experience that you can expect, because there are significant differences between different plates and different bowls. Have you ever noticed that when you heat your food in the microwave, sometimes you heat the plate and not the food, or at other times you're guessing how long you actually need to reheat the same meal for? Well, this could be because you're using different plates at different times, and those different plates, they themselves heat differently. You may actually be sabotaging your food by using the wrong plate, and I want to investigate this now and provide you with some answers as to why. I've gone out and I've bought three different plates. I tried to choose plates of similar sizes to minimise the difference and to allow us to focus on the difference between them as a result of the ceramic materials they're made from. I have three plates. I have an earthenware plate here, which is perhaps the lightest and also the thickest in terms of its cross section. I have a stoneware plate, which is probably the heaviest. And I also have a porcelain plate, which is perhaps the thinnest in terms of its profile. I'm sure you've all heard of different ceramic materials, terracotta, earthenware, stoneware, fine china, porcelain, bone china. They all are different, very different types of ceramic and have very different properties as a result of their nature and their makeup. Perhaps the ones which are closest, however, are porcelain, fine china and bone china. So I've taken one plate, the porcelain plate, to represent those three. So let's have a little experiment. Let's put these three plates in a microwave under standard test conditions and see what happens to them, see if there are any differences in the way they behave. There is a standard European test for determining if an item is microwave safe or not. Firstly, take the plate to be tested and soak it in water for an hour. Then remove it from that water and dry it thoroughly. Place it in a microwave with two glasses of water, the water represent the food, and then microwave it for a set period of time. With an 800 micro watt microwave, this is 90 seconds. At the end, examine the item for damage and check the surface temperature. If the surface temperature is less than 56 degrees and there's no damage, the item is considered to be microwave safe and can be labelled as such. We can see that the earthenware plate has failed this test, reaching temperatures of upwards of 95 degrees centigrade. Not only would this be dangerous to touch, but it could potentially cause major injury as well. So this would not be considered microwave safe in Europe. The stoneware plate, however, in stark contrast to the earthenware plate, only reached perhaps 45 degrees centigrade. And the porcelain plate, similarly, maximum of 50 degrees centigrade. Both of these are cool enough to touch and would be considered microwave safe. The key difference between these three plates and their ceramics is what's known as their open porosity or the amount of space that actually exists within the plate itself. If you imagine that the clay is made up of lots of particles, and when you fire the plate, these particles are glued together. Now with the earthenware plate, it's fired at a very low temperature, about 950 degrees centigrade. And these particles, although they glue together, leave lots of little gaps between them. This is known as open porosity. And this open porosity allows that ceramic to act as a sponge and soak things up like the water, for example, that it was soaked in before the test. The stoneware and the porcelain, however, their particles, when they're fired, they're fired at a much higher temperature and they close up completely. So there's virtually no, or in fact, no space between these particles. So unlike the earthenware, which acts like a sponge, they can't soak anything up. So what happened in this testing was that we soaked the plates for an hour as required by the test and the earthenware soaked up water. And then when we microwaved it, we were actually microwaving the water and heating the water and hence we got to 95 degrees centigrade because effectively we're boiling the water within this ceramic, the water that the ceramic has absorbed. Whereas with the porcelain and with the stoneware, there's no water in there, it's only ceramic and therefore there's nothing to heat up in the same way. What this means for you, the customer, is that if you use an earthenware plate to heat your food, it takes much longer to heat your food because you're heating the water in the plate as much as you're heating the food. Whereas with a stoneware or with a porcelain plate, you're heating the food and not the plate. 
Now, what happens if I microwave the plates without food on them, or in this case, water in the microwave? Well, here we have the earthenware plate microwaving, and if you listen to the track, you can hear it vibrating in the microwave as the water is boiling and coming out and shaking the plate. And then at the end, you can see the water from within the plate, that it's soaked up, hissing out of a crack on the top. Uh, because it's boiling. However, the pressure of the steam didn't cause the plate to break or explode. It merely caused a crack and escaped through that crack. When we heat the porcelain plate, remember there's no porosity, so there's no water in the plate. So we're just heating the ceramic. And microwaves heat differently across an area. So some, you get hot spots and cold spots. That's why you have the turntable to try and stop this. But these hot spots and cold spots create terrible stresses in the plate which causes its catastrophic failure as we see and we can see those hot spots and cold spots and the differences in temperatures measured after the failure. So what can we conclude from this? Well firstly obviously only ever use a plate in the microwave that is recommended as microwave safe. You've seen what can happen if that's not the case. Secondly try and avoid earthenwares and terracottas they have porosity, they soak up water, they will soak up water from the dishwasher, from your hand washing, etc. And that will affect the way in which in the future you can heat food. And finally, the different clays make for different plates. And I will demonstrate that further in future videos with strength tests and so on. Thank you.